BioWatch 3 Raw TV. Now, I don't know why I decided to look for this on YouTube from the popular YouTubers. Now, I found a few things that were um, very much so biology related and a more classroom type uh, lecture type things. But I realized that, you know, after my amino acid video about branch chain amino acids, I realized that a lot of people out there, including coaches and people watching YouTube and even some quote unquote experts, don't understand a lot about the stuff that. You know, I want to say it's basic, but, you know, I guess for some people it's not basic. Basic is like protein, carbs, and fats, calories. That's like basic, and I guess that's what people base things on. But there's a lot more that kind of goes on to it, and I have discussions with people, and when I talk to them about, like, the Krebs cycle and stuff, a lot of people don't know what the Krebs cycle is. So I'm kind of like, wait, well, what else don't you know about? And I brought up the amino acid pool, and, you know, the person I was talking to looked at me like, you know, amino acid pool, what's that? And I was like, shit, you know, you're out there helping people and giving people advice on diet and how to build muscle and shit and you don't even know what the amino acid pool is. So today we're going to kind of run through that a little bit and hopefully this will clear some things up. So I got the marker board out because this is easier for me to follow so hopefully this will help you guys out a little bit too. So the amino acid pool right here basically is a pool that constantly has, it stores amino acids in your body. So there's constantly amino acids going in and out of this pool for different bodily functions and needs. Now, you'll notice that certain things have arrows going only in, some things have certain arrows only going out, and some of them go in and out together, okay? So protein, that's first. Protein becomes amino acids, okay? Aminos don't become protein, so this arrow only goes down into the amino acid pool. Once protein's broken down, it's broken down into amino acids. Now, we'll start, we'll go clockwise. Glycogen and lipids. Amino acids can be turned into glycogen and lipids However, glycogen and lipids cannot be turned into amino acids. So therefore, this arrow only goes towards this direction, which can make these things. So basically, your body can make glucose, or if you want to put it in more simple terms, you can make carbohydrates, which that's not true, but a carbohydrate becomes glucose once it's broken down. Or it can actually store amino acids, extra amino acids, as lipids or body fat, okay? Something that we never really want to do. Now, um, non-protein consumption so this one goes both ways. You'll notice it goes towards the amino acid pool and out. This one is amino acid supplements. Essential amino acids, branch chain amino acids, et cetera, et cetera. That's what that is, okay? So it's not coming from protein. It's already broken down into amino acids, and that can be stored in the amino acid pool, okay? But the amino acid pool can also come out and be used as, you know, energy, et cetera, et cetera. So they, that arrow goes in and out. Now, the amino acid pool going only out this way it can be catabolic, turn into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So it can be used basically to combat catabolism, to become anabolic, okay, which is the first one on the top. It can become carbon dioxide, it can be used, broken down into water for energy with carbon dioxide to be used as energy. So again, it can be an energy source, it can be a glycogen source, it can be stored as fat, and then it can also be used for other things. It's, it's actually kind of complicated when you start looking at it like this. I never really thought about it like that much. Other new aminos, these go in and out also, okay? Now, other new aminos, meaning you take in aminos, you could take in the essential, non-essential, whatever, but you need to take in the essential amino acids, which means your body cannot make them. When this says other, non, other new aminos, it means your body can take amino acids from the amino acid pool and make other amino acids. The non-essential amino acids means your body can make them, okay? So you have to take in essential amino acids. It's essential that you take them in, we'll just put it that way, or your body can produce non-essential, but if you're not taking in the essential amino acids, you are deficient in amino acids, okay, period. And the last one over here, tissue, plasma, and hormones. And this goes both ways. Tissue can be broken down into amino acids and be used in the amino acid pool, so catabolism will break down muscle tissue, <clears throat> excuse me, and then put in the amino acid pool for them to be rearranged and used at a later date. Also, amino acids can be arranged to make tissue, okay, or plasma, which is the uh, you know the hyperplasmic training that people are doing, like the sarcoplasmic training, et cetera, et cetera, that's protein inside that, which water amino acids that makes the plasma. Now, this amino acid pool <clears throat> is responsible for just about everything that goes into your body, as far as repairing itself, hormone fluctuations. I mean, you know, hair, skin, nails, how fast you heal, immune system. I mean, all these different things, and this is basic stuff. Why you know it's Interesting how people, they know what protein is, but they don't understand that it's broken up to aminos and it does all these different things. Now, 
we, we'll get into another one in the next video. I think we'll get into actually muscle tissue and how this here builds muscle tissue, which is a whole other video. I think we'll stop this one here right now because we're going to have to erase the board and then kind of go through all kinds of other shit. So hopefully this guy's helped you out, helped you guys out a little bit. It's um a little bit complicated, but it is very basic and it's knowledge that people don't have. I think maybe I'll cover the Krebs cycle also, um, which is the production of energy in the body. And we'll do the muscle building process from the amino acid pool and how that works so that we can really get some information out there to you guys that is not out there. And I get a lot of people questioning, not anymore. When I first started, I got a lot of people questioning my techniques, what I was doing, my, you know, the way that I did diets, the way that I did my training, how I was able to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time, which now those people that are arguing me in the scientific community are using the word recomp and saying recomp is possible, losing muscle and, uh, I mean, excuse me, gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time, which it doesn't necessarily have to do with steroids. Your body can do it naturally. If it can do it on steroids, it can actually do it naturally, just not to as big a degree as if you were on the drug. So hopefully, again, this guy's help you guys out. And, you know, don't stop here. What you're seeing here, you can go ahead online and start researching yourself and going deeper into this if you want more understanding of it. But this is the best way that I can basically break it down so that I understand it. And if I understand it broken down like this, hopefully it's basic enough for a lot of you to understand it and it gives you just a little more insight. So, biostrengthtraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biostrength.com is a blog. It's a protein amino acid pool biosapid. We're out.